My name is Rusty Lee. I want to share with you some factors to consider when growing sweet corn. Sweet corn can be a very valuable crop. It's not that difficult to grow, but there are a few common key areas that we need to make sure that we work on. We're going to talk about variety selection, maintaining proper fertility, some planting considerations, weed management, concerns for disease and insects, watering is a key area, and then harvest. So when we're working on variety selection, we have a lot of choices. Some of the oldest varieties have been around for hundreds of years. These are the SU or the standard sweet corn. Some examples of this would be, say, Silver Queen. These are varieties that are sweeter than field corn, but they do have some drawbacks. This is a, a type of uh, sweet corn that has a very fast conversion of sugar back to starch. So when we grow the sweet corn, we have a nice sweet ear, high sugar content. But once we snap that ear, unless it hits boiling water or gets some refrigeration, you'll find that the sugar converts the starch rapidly and leaves you with a less desirable ear. Next consideration are the SE types. These are probably some of the most popular sweet corn varieties out there. This would be your candy corns. This would be your bodacious, your incredible sweet corns. Now, these have a higher sugar content over the standard or the SU varieties. And with some refrigeration, you can get a little shelf life out of these. We do notice that when we go to the higher sugar content SEs, that the kernel at planting time has a little less seedling vigor. The plant is a little weaker coming out of the ground. Uh, we think about warmer soil temperatures to help compensate for that. And when we're growing SEs, we're still not concerned with pollen isolation. We'll see that some varieties do require a separation distance, but SEs and SUs do not require that. A super sweet, or a SH2 as it's called, has an extremely high sugar content. And it has some genetics that has uh, slowed the conversion of sugar back to starch once that ear is, is picked. We find that you can get a week's shelf life out of these types with refrigeration. These became very popular for shipping. The seeds are a little more fragile, actually, a little more tender seedling. So it requires uh, a little more of a precision plant, good depth control, and we want to handle the seed gently. And these do require pollen isolation. So if you're going to have SH2s, they need to be separated from your SEs and SU varieties by 250 feet, just so we don't have pollen drift from the SE or SUs coming over. And it will impact the flavor profile of your SH2s. The synergistics or the SYs, they do not require pollen isolation. In fact, each ear on this corn will have a combination. It's a composite of all the genetics. About half the kernels will be the SU standards, and then about a quarter of those kernels will express the genetics of the SE, and then a quarter will be the SH2. This is a very popular ear that's good for shipping. You'll find that this ear has a good flavor when picked fresh and consumed right away, but then it also has the shelf staying capacity to be a good tasting ear after you know, a week's cold storage and, and shipping for distribution. Fertility, we have to understand that corn is a hungry feeder. You cannot skimp on your fertility. Step one is always a soil test before planting. If we need lime, we got to get that down. We do have a wide range of tolerable pH from a 5.8 to a 6.5, but nonetheless, we need to verify that we've got that in place. A heavy feeder of nitrogen. A lot of growers fall short here, and they have smaller ears, shorter plant height. They're, they're not impressed with the production of their sweet corn choice, and a lot of times it goes back to inadequate nitrogen. So it's not uncommon for that crop to need 150 pounds per acre of actual nitrogen. If you're working on smaller blocks, uh, thinking in thousands of square feet, that would be three pounds of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet. 
soil test we want to follow for the phosphorus and potassium additions. It would be typical if you have a medium level of phosphorus on your soil test that you would still need about 60 pounds per acre of phosphorus and 85 pounds of potassium. Obviously, if your soils are deficient in one of these, it's going to go up significantly from that, and we have to consult the soil test. When it comes to planting, corn does not like to be standing in water. So if you have some low spots in the field, think about doing some leveling. We want to have good drainage in the field. We want to get the water away from it from heavy rainfall events. The SH2s are, are very popular, but remember that is a small seed. It's going to require perhaps a uh, particular planter. Vacuum planters work well with these small seeds. We want to gently handle the seed because they are easily damaged, and they do have a higher soil temperature requirement for germination. The SUs and SEs, we can work in 55 to 60 degree soil temperature, but when we move to the SH2s, 60 degrees becomes a minimum, and they actually perform much better at, say, 65 degrees. In our area, 30-inch row spacing is very common and works well. Think about an in-the-row plant spacing of 7 to 8 inches. That'll get us a plant population of about 24,000 plants per acre. If you're trying to push for a larger ear or as large as that genetics will express for the variety you've chosen, you can back the population down a little bit into the low 20,000s and perhaps get a little bit larger ear. But normally, these sweet corn varieties will be just fine at 24,000. Weeds, this is nothing new. Weeds reduce yield and quality. We all understand that. They do this by competing for light. They compete for water, compete for soil fertility and the nutrients. So weed control is a must. Now, mechanical cultivation can work if you have the labor to put into it, but we got to keep the weeds out. There are a wide selection of herbicides available. Uh, a real common, very effective combination is uh, atrazine and tulachlor. Uh, atrazine is a restricted use pesticide. So if you want to plan to use atrazine and you don't have your private applicator's license, contact your local extension office so we can get you through the, the short training to get your private pesticide applicator's license so that you can purchase and, and utilize the atrazine. 50 species of insects may be the, a very small percentage of the total insect world, but nonetheless, these 50 species can cause a lot of economic harm and injury to our plants, and so they really get our attention. All parts of the corn plant are subject to insect damage, and we group these pests as soil or foliar pests. So we have the below ground and the above ground. Seed treatment becomes very important to help protect our seedling plants from the below ground feeders, as well as some diseases. So always utilize seed treatments for that. And then when we get the foliar pests, there's none more widely known than the, than the earworm, right? The earworm is the single largest loss factor in fresh market sweet corn. So this is a moth that flies in from the south and lays eggs on the silks of the forming ear. And then that caterpillar feeds on those silks and makes its way into the ear. So control measures would be uh, frequent and regular interval of an insecticide spray once silks have appeared. We have to keep those silks with a coating of pesticide so that when the moth lays an egg and the caterpillar starts feeding, that it ingests that insecticide and dies before it gets into the ear. Another popular way to, to work with this is to utilize the BT technology. Many sweet corn varieties now have the BT gene such that the caterpillar will die when it tries to feed on the silks of the corn without us needing to apply an insecticide. Diseases, if common field corn, yellow dent corn, if it's a disease of that, we're, we're pretty much susceptible to the same list of diseases for our, our sweet corn. We can see significant reductions in yield and quality. After we have treated seed, an even bigger factor to consider is planting resistant varieties. So look at your description of your variety choices and the seed catalogs 
and think about the diseases prevalent in your area and make sure we're choosing some sweet corn varieties that do show uh, resistance to those diseases. Irrigation. So prior to tassel, we're just trying to avoid wilt stress. We're just trying to keep the plant growing, keeping it healthy and happy. Infrequent watering can do that. We, we have often in the springs sufficient rain to, to keep this going, but do be prepared. We want to avoid any type of wilt stress. Probably the bigger problem is overwatering. So at this stage of growth, we want to make sure that it has adequate moisture, but we don't want to overdo it. Now, once the plant has tasseled and the ear is forming, the water consumption and the nitrogen consumption of this plant really ramps up in an exponential manner. It's very common for corn plants to need an inch and a half plus of water per week. So if you're not getting an inch and a half of, of rainfall, you need to be thinking about supplemental irrigation. We want to avoid that water stress. Harvest and handling when the silks turn brown, and get dry, that's a good indication that we're getting very close. We're looking for the plump kernels. We want them to be milky, so they're in the milk stage. Here they'll be nice and tender and sweet. Realize we have a very short window for this to occur. If we go early, we're going to find an ear that's not quite ready. It's going to have a higher water content, and it's not going to be quite as sweet. And if we wait too long, we're moving into a starch or a dense stage, and we're gonna find the kernels are tougher and not as sweet. So you have just a few days that it's optimum freshness for harvest. If we're needing an extended harvest window, consider making multiple planting blocks. So as you plant your sweet corn, have a delayed planting so that we have subsequent follow-up harvest. If you're not gonna consume the sweet corn within just a few hours of harvest, we really need to think about refrigeration or field heat removal. There's no more effective way than with hydro cooling or using ice cold water, submerging the corn in ice cold water to help suck the heat out of it so that we can stabilize that sugar and stop that conversion to starch. And then we would store the corn at, at about 32 degrees. We're not going to freeze it, but we're going to get it as cold as we can to maintain it there without freezing it will give you the longer shelf life. Forced air cooling of sweet corn, it will eventually get it down to 32 and it's certainly better than no refrigeration. However, that process takes much longer than the water submersion method where you will find that you have more conversion to starch with the air versus the water. Once we do get it stabilized, you'll find that you'll have with our SE types maybe a week shelf life out of that, whereas the SH2s, we can have more of a 10 days to two weeks storage life. So the key takeaways here is that the ideal soil for growing our sweet corn crop is going to be well drained. Uh, we don't need standing water. Corn does not like to have wet feet. Standing water is death for it. We're going to use treated seed so that we can help reduce incidence of disease and even the insect feeding below ground. We're going to be prepared with fertility and supplemental irrigation. We're going to be able to water and keep the fertility up to maximize our yield. We're going to have a weed control program. Mechanical control of weeds will take a lot of labor, significant labor. So do consider having a chemical control program up front. Corn earworm, we can deal with those either through insecticide applications or planting some of the BT varieties. And that sweet spot of milk stage harvest, be looking for that to happen about two weeks after silting. And then once we do pick our ears, we're going to have a method to get the field heat removed. We want to maintain a good quality, consistent product for our customers. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. Be glad to talk to you about sweet corn production or contact your local county extension office and they can direct you to someone to help answer your questions. Thank you.